Hi, I'm Jim Dennison with Dennison Forum, and this is the Daily Article for Friday, May 14th, 2021. The title is, quote, This is something that is new. This is horrific. This is unbearable, end quote. The latest on the conflict in Israel and four biblical responses. Hamas fired large fuselages of rockets at Tel Aviv and other civilian areas in Israel yesterday as the conflict in the Holy Land continues to escalate. More than 1,500 rockets and mortar shells have been launched toward Israel this week. The large number is intended to overwhelm Israel's Iron Dome air defense system. Armed drones were sent into southern Israel as well. Ben-Gurion International Airport was closed to incoming passenger flights. The Israeli military has stationed troops near Gaza and is preparing for a possible ground assault. Earlier this week, I discussed this conflict in the context of Jewish and Muslim historical narratives. Today, let's seek to understand it in relation to recent developments and events. Then we'll focus on practical ways you and I can make a difference. So let's start with why now. Hamas, the name Hamas, means zeal in Arabic. It forms an acronym spelled backwards for Islamic Resistance Movement. Its official charter calls for the destruction of Israel and raising, quote, the banner of Allah over every inch of Palestine, end quote. When it attacks Israel, it's doing what it was, in fact, created to do. For more, I would invite you to see my 2014 paper on our website, Four Crucial Questions About Hamas. The story behind the story, however, is Iran's support for Hamas. It backs Hamas and Hezbollah, which is the terrorist organization that dominates Lebanon to the north of Israel, as it seeks to extend its influence across the Middle East. Iran is Shiite and Persian. It's locked in a geopolitical conflict with Saudi Arabia and other Sunni Arab nations. Israel's recent peace accords with some of these countries threatens Iran's dominance of the region. By empowering Hamas to attack Israel, it has provoked an Israeli response that it can caricature as an attack on all Muslims. Well, since the Quran requires Muslims to defend Islam, Iran may be hoping that the present conflict will rally all Muslims in opposition to the Jews, defeating Israel's peace initiatives with the Sunni world. As I noted earlier this week, Iran also believes that engendering such conflict and chaos prepares the way for the coming of the Mahdi, its Messiah. Hamas has taken advantage of tensions over the possible expulsion of six Palestinian families from East Jerusalem and the Jerusalem Day March that coincided with a significant Muslim holiday. Its leaders have also sought to position themselves to win Palestinian legislative elections that were scheduled for May 22nd, though they're now indefinitely postponed. With Iran's help, it has developed more extensive rockets and other weaponry than ever before and is using these munitions to target civilian populations more than ever before. Israel has dealt with Hamas in the past and will undoubtedly continue to do so. But what's happening now between Jewish Israelis and Arab Israelis is especially troubling for the future. Of the 9 million people who live in Israel, 2 million are Arab. Another 2 million Palestinians live in Gaza and 2.7 million in the West Bank. Most Jews and Arabs in Israel have learned to live peaceably as neighbors since the state of Israel was founded in 1948. However, the country is now experiencing the worst internal Arab-Israeli conflicts since the last intifada or uprising back in 2010. The newspaper The Times of Israel reports that, quote, scenes of unrest, rioting, hate rallies, and growing social chaos spread throughout numerous cities, some of which were once seen as symbols of coexistence, end quote. TikTok and other social media platforms are being used to encourage and inflame street protests as activists on both sides take out their pent-up anger and frustration on the other. In one particularly shocking scene, hundreds of Jewish extremists in the town of Bayam vandalized Arab property and then assaulted an Arab driver in his car, dragging him from the vehicle and beating him savagely. Jewish mobs were seen roaming the streets of Haifa and Tiberias looking for Arabs to assault. An Arab at the Machna Yuda market in Jerusalem was stabbed by Jews and seriously injured. The chant, death to Arabs, was heard in Jewish rallies. Meanwhile, Arab riots were reported in Jerusalem, Lod, Haifa, Tamra, and elsewhere. 
A Jewish man in Accra was hospitalized in critical condition after he was assaulted with rocks and iron bars. A Jewish man in Tamra was stabbed and assaulted by an Arab mob. An Arab paramedic said the attackers almost burned the man inside his car before he helped evacuate him to safety. Israel has called up 10 companies of reservists to support police in quelling this street violence. One Tel Aviv resident said in the news, quote, I think this is different from anything I've seen, and I've been living here for 24 years. I just want to point out that we're all Israelis, so Jews, Arabs, we're all Israelis. Zippy Livni, who was a former cabinet member and a former chief negotiator in peace talks with the Palestinians, made this statement. What was maybe under the surface has now exploded and created a combination that is really horrific. I don't want to use the words civil war, but this is something that is new, this is unbearable, this is horrific, and I'm very worried. Unlike the conflict with Hamas, which can be confined to a small geographic area and managed through military means, street violence is a police matter that is difficult to quell. That's why political leaders from across the spectrum are decrying this violence. Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz is warning that Israeli internal divisions are, quote, no less dangerous than Hamas. How can Christians intercede biblically in these tragic days? First, pray for Jewish, Palestinian, and world leaders, as 1 Timothy 2 instructs. Ask God to give them wisdom and practical guidance. Second, as we learn from Psalm 122, verse 6, pray for God's shalom, the Hebrew word for peace. It's far more than the cessation of violence. It is true and lasting peace with God, others, and ourselves. Three, pray for Jews and Muslims to turn to Jesus as their Messiah and Savior. As we learn from John 16, 33, he is the only path to peace that all people seek. And fourth, pray for ways to love the Jews and Arabs that you know. We find this in John 13. Anti-Semitism is rising in America and around the world. Many Arabs are facing oppression and discrimination in America and the West as well. So look for opportunities to demonstrate God's love in your compassion by building relationships centered in grace. A Zen proverb says, obstacles do not block the path, they are the path. Let's see this unfolding tragedy in Israel as the path to intercession that could lead to spiritual awakening in the Middle East and beyond. And let's resolve to walk that path to the glory of God. Why not right now?